Fedheads, you tune into another episode of Sharing Our Pairings. This is Sharing Our Pairings, episode 114, Neon Tiger. I'm your host, John the Cigar Surgeon. Sharing Our Pairings is broadcast live around the world, picked up in the Armed Forces Radio Network. That little pre-show banter was brought to you by the delicious Neon Tiger, which has got us all flustered and not paying attention to what we're doing. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Trippy Trent. Trippy, what's going on tonight, buddy? Uh... I'm, I'm like, I can't take my mind off of this cigar right now. Right? It's just so good. Uh, I was expecting it to be good, but it's, it's just kind of, I'm, I feel really impressed. Uh, and it's one of those cigars that you just want to keep smoking and just rage on. Yeah, we're just sitting there uh, bantering about some, uh, some upcoming travel, not even paying attention. I think that's the first time we've done that on sharing our pairings. It's been so distracted by a cigar that we're not yeah. even... Now, you know, aware that there's a live audience out there somewhere tuned in to uh, to our show. And if you are tuned in, make sure to give us an up thumbs, up vote, uh, emoticon, heart, wow, subscribe. whatever, subscribe, I... you know, all that good stuff. And we are looking to uh, potentially make a change with uh, with our broadcast. Uh, right now we're simulcast. Uh, so for those who are tuning in on YouTube, uh, we're potentially just going to change our stream to Facebook because it seems to be a lot more people just easily more conveniently tune into facebook so uh if there's any th- thoughts feedback uh anyone takes exception to that let us know on facebook on youtube whatever or you know go to cigarfederation.com or we're housed and uh drop us a comment drop in chat you know whatever but uh we're smoking something really funky funkalicious funky fresh yeah a little Check bit special out. it's cool the neon tiger it's and as we were talking before we lit it up, it feels kind of bad smoking a cigar that's this artistic, uh-huh. um, because you know so much. I mean, it it's probably I would guess fifty percent more work for the roller at least. Oh, it's got to be at least. Um, and it's got the uh, the new patented. You can't really see it there. If it'll focus, you might be able to kind of see it. Oh, there we go. It's got seven layer cap. The old. The old traditional Cuban septuple cap. Um, it's legit. I mean, this this cannot be an easy cigar to make. Mm. It's got four different wrappers on there, which at first I thought that it was actually like really barber pulled. Um, but it looks like they just have some strips of everything but the candela on there. So you're yeah. definitely getting a little bit of the flavor. But I was kind of worried smoking a cigar with four wrappers that it was just going to be overpowering. So this cigar, of course, comes from our good friends at Blackworks Studio, which is a subset of Black Label Trading Company. Uh, filler in this bad boy is a combination of Nicaraguan and Dominican. Uh, binder is Ecuadorian Seco Habano. And then the wrapper, which is kind of the hotness. Of course, you can see that candela. I mean, that's it's oh. obviously a candela. But uh, what else is on there is you've got some Habano Ecuador, you've got some Maduro Ecuador, and then you've got some Connecticut shade, just to keep everybody honest. And we've been talking about this thing for about 20 minutes straight. And uh, it's, I mean, I would rage on these all I mean, day long. I've already been raging on it. Look at that ad. Yeah. I, I feel bad about that. I don't usually slow smoke your roll, dog. You gotta slow your roll. Yeah. I mean, normally when I smoke Connecticut's and I smoke um, Candela's, I get. Uh, a lot of grassiness and I get a lot of that post draw grassiness. And what I'm really impressed on, first of all, is it's like got a, just an amazingly clean finish. Like uh, we were talking, it started out with a ton of pepper, like just a huge blast of pepper just to kick things off. Um, but now I'm getting some nice creaminess, some sweetness. And I do get that hay and that grassy note from the Kendall mm-hmm. and the, and the, and the, probably from the Connecticut shade wrapper that's in there. But the finish is just so quick. Like it's, it's just a quick, quick finish. It doesn't linger on my palate at all. Um, yeah. I mean, this, yeah, is, this for me, is really good. For me, there's just a little bit of spice left on the finish. Um, there's no heaviness or anything like that. A lot of times you get that heavy finish. That's kind of, um, I don't know. I get, I guess I think of it uh, of a very earthy long finish as a heavy finish. Yeah. Cause it kind of sticks to your tongue and you, you sort of have to wait for that flavor to kind of subside before you can take another puff. Uh, but with this, the finish is so clean, I'm just raging on it. And I've got a little bit of cocoa on the retrohale, a little bit of that grassy hay note, uh, obviously some sweetness. Um, you know, like beyond the fact that it's a beautiful 
like it's not it's a it's a piece of art really like you like you said it's, it almost feels bad smoking this um but it's well constructed i mean it's one of those cigars you can feel i mean when you when you press it you can feel just how much tobacco that they've got packed in here uh the construction of course is flawless i mean it's beautiful but um the size is good this the i mean obviously look at the ash you know we haven't yeah touched that up for the audience and uh you know she good i'm digging and- it and if you're not familiar with Blackwork Studio, this is kind of their their whole thing for Blackwork Studio that differentiates it from uh, Black Label is the artistic element. All of the Blackworks cigars have some sort of artistic element mixed in uh, with the wrapper that just kind of shows that they, they go a little further than just making a cigar. They make a pretty cigar. And they've been around for a little while now, I think uh, since 2013. And, uh, maybe that's just, no, yeah, since, since, since 2013, um, I've pretty much raged on everything they make. Of course, I'm wearing the, the Bishop's Blend shirt cause, uh, you know, it's all about that Bishop's Blend son. If you haven't smoked that 2017 Bishop's Blend, well, that's too bad cause you can't get it cause they, they sold out. Like, I think, I think Logan said like 200 boxes or something like that, 150 boxes were gone. Uh, by the time he woke up in the morning and had published by the time he had checked on the status of the box, which was like 38 minutes later, they're all gone. Yeah, it was somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes that they yeah. sold out completely, which is insane. And they got some new hotness coming out, which, um, you know, well, I, actually, I, need, I still need to smoke the NBK. I still need to smoke the Deliverance. Uh, you know, I keep, I keep claiming I'm going to do a review of the uh, Green Hornet, but I just keep smoking them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like I've gone through half my bundle that I bought. So, you know, and of course the Bishop's one 2017, which, uh, I'm glad I got a, uh, like, I'm glad they came in boxes of 20 instead of boxes yeah. of 10, because originally I, for whatever reason, I thought it in my head that there were boxes of 10 and I've already smoked four of them. <laughs> so it's like, and obviously I haven't done a review cause I was like, you know, I'm not really buying it to review it. I'm buying it cause I want to smoke it. Uh, but I can't wait to do a review of that because, uh, frankly, I think it's going to be a top 10 cigar of 2017. In fact, I think there's going to be a tough crowd at the, the top 10 list this year. Probably one of the toughest lineups, uh, based on some of the stuff we've smoked at the IPCPR. This could be one of the toughest lineups of the, uh, of the past years. Yeah. Just the stuff that comes out in like the first half of the year that I've smoked so far. And, uh, some of it I've posted reviews, some of it I've reviewed, but haven't posted yet. Um, uh, I've already got three top 10 cigars. Wow. Or at least they'll be contenders before I smoke the hundred blends that we have from releases from the show. We got, a, we got a couple of cigars from the show that need to be, uh, queued up. Fortunately, I haven't been inundated yet. Uh, Will Cooper from primetime live was talking today about, uh, being inundated with requests to review. And I, and I get it because you know, it's now is kind of the time where manufacturers need to make hay. Uh, this is kind of the busy season mm-hmm. for stores and if a, a good review can kind of make or break a launch and obviously everyone wants their cigar reviewed, I'm going to go with, uh, something a little different this year, uh, to sort of avoid favoritism because really, you know, I'd just be reviewing all the stuff I like. Uh, so I'm going to randomize my cigar list this year. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So that kind of takes my personal bias out. Um, kind of forces me to try everything and you know that'll probably mean that a lot of cigars that may not have gotten early reviews last year would hopefully get early reviews this year but uh, I'm talking about cigars and really not talking about pairing um, so we're we're both kind of going to the pairing here a little bit blind because uh, unless I'm mistaken you haven't smoked this before have you? Mm-mm. This is my first and only one. Oh, and we did we forgot to talk about where you can get this cigar oh that's right which is almost nowhere. Almost nowhere. Uh, James was kind enough to give us a couple at the show, one each. Uh, and you, I, he didn't mention this, but you said that they're actually available if you go to the factory. If you go to the factory. You can buy some. Um, now. Next time I, I go to that factory, I know what I'm buying. Mm-hmm. Like, I hope, I hope there's a bundle ready. And I'm not even kidding. Because I would smoke, I would smoke a bundle of twenty-five of these bad boys. I'd probably smoke oh, yeah. five or ten in country, and then bring the rest back. But, yep. Um, Me too. Yeah, it's good. It's good. And I, I kind of been cheating because um, I went all beers tonight. Normally, I'd throw some whiskey in the mix, but I kind of went all beers tonight, and I'm, I've been cheating because it's uh, it's kind of hot. I mean, it's not a complaint; it's an observation. 
but it's in the uh it's like we're pushing 90 degrees uh, which is good. I like the heat. Uh, I'm not going to like the heat at 10 o'clock tonight when I've got 16 fans on in the house because we don't have any central air, mm-hmm. as most homes in Calgary do not have air conditioning. So uh, I might be uh, I might be uh, cursing the heat a little bit later. And you said it's pretty hot where you are. Yeah, it's about, uh, let's see, 86 right now. Woo! So I mean, it, it's pretty hot, not crazy hot. Um, but the, the good thing about here, I don't know how it is there. So here, the humidity, like, we're in a, I think it's because we're in a valley and we don't typically get any cloud cover whatsoever in the summer. As soon as the sun goes down, like 8.30, 9, as soon as the sun goes down, the heat's just gone. Like it drops to 65 degrees within an hour, which is awesome. So we have a very bizarre weather pattern here. We're talking about weather. I realize that for all I have of us who are tuned in live. Uh, I'm just going to say a little comment and move on to our pairing, but... Uh, there's been times where the sun goes down and it warms up. Yeah. The, By like see, 10 or 15 degrees. I'm not okay with that. That's, I mean, whatever. It, and it's weird because we're a semi-arid desert here, so that should, really shouldn't happen. It should really cool off quickly at night. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Calgary makes its own rules. Anyways, I'm going to hop right into uh, pairing. Um, I mean, I could talk about Blackwork Studio all night. I love the cigars. Buy it. If you like really, really good artisanal cigars, you should be buying Blackwork Studio if you're not familiar yeah. with Blackwork Studio. Go buy them. They're available all over the place. Uh, You can get them at the uh, Cigar Federation store who is not affiliated with us. But, um, you know, pick them up. Buy them now. So first up, a little local Canadian goodness here. This is the Lug Tread. The Lug Tread Lagered Ale. And uh, it's very sessionable, very tasty. I don't think I'm going to down the entire 600 ml bottle tonight. Um... I'll just quickly do a primer on uh, Bo's Brewery, who is out of Ontario. Opened in 2006, family-owned and operated, started with uh, father and son team, Tim and Steve. And uh, they're one of the only true certified organic breweries located in Canada, which is kind of interesting. If you're into that kind of thing, organic isn't really a thing that I look for, but if you're looking for organic brewery, that's kind of cool. And they're located in Van Leek Hill, Ontario. Van Leek Hill, that's on the east side of Canada, for those who are paying attention to geography. Jeffy, what do you got going on for your first pairing of the night? Uh, so my first pairing is a little something from that my uh, my my buddy the Canadian gave me. So this is uh, Havana Club Selection de Maestros. Oh. I don't know as much about it as you do. You know a lot more about this stuff than I do. I know it's forty five percent ABV, which is a little bit stronger than the stuff they typically sell out of Cuba. Um, and I know that they do like a, a triple aging, right? So they, right. they select basically the best barrels at some period of time, age those again, and then select the best barrels from those. And then it sounds like they aged it again in a different barrel. Yeah. Okay. They, they've added together. So they essentially do three agings and three vattings of okay. what they consider the best of those three rums. And then the th- by the time the third aging is done, they bottle the best of those casks and you're left with the maestro, which, I mean, I'll let you talk about it, but uh, it's a very different rum than other stuff that I've had. Mm-hmm. Now, have you, have you sampled this or is this going to be the first time you sampled uh, it? I, I took a little sippy just while you were talking about yours, but uh, other than that, this is the first time I've ever had it. Nice. Well, that's good. It's always fun to try to try that fresh on sharing yeah. our pairings. It's always nice to try something new on sharing our pairings. I will uh, just let our audience know that you are tuning in live to sharing our pairings episode 114, Neon Tiger by Blackwork Studio, Black Label Trading Company. If you're tuning in by Facebook Live, let us know if you're okay with us just doing stream directly to Facebook going in the future. Thanks for all our podcast and listeners out there. It's Bye. worth noting that if if we do go through with the change to Facebook, it will still be available on YouTube after the broadcast is over, it will only be live on Facebook. Well said. Please stay tuned for a word from one of our sponsors. Brought to you by Gurkha Cigars. Gurkha Cigars, makers of the world's finest cigars. Try the 93 rated Heritage featuring a Rosado, Ecuador, and Habana wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, and Dominican, Pennsylvania, and Nicaraguan fillers. Blended by Gurkha's blending team at American Caribbean Cigars, it's hand rolled Nicaraguan available in 35 count boxes. Talk to your local BM about the Heritage today, or talk to them about other fine Gurkha cigars. Whatever your taste preference is, Gurkha has a cigar that's right for you. And we're back. 
doing a little pairing. I'm your host, John the Scar Surgeon, joined by my co-host, Trippy Trent, doing some pairing. Um, you've got a fantastic rum. I've got a tasty lagered ale. I'm going to hold that up for audience. Give you a little something, something in the in the view screen for those who are tuned in live. It looks like an ale. It's got that straw honey color. I'm just dripping ale all over the place like some sort of animal here. Um, so a little bit about the specs on this bad boy. It's only 5.2% ABV. I say only because that's very sessionable for me. 21 IBUs, and they have a crap ton of stats on their site, which I totally dig. In fact, their site is one of the better ones I've seen. 12 degrees Play-Doh, original gravity, ideal serving temperature between 4 and 7 degrees Celsius. That is uh, what? That's 40 to 45 Fahrenheit freedom. Mm-hmm. Uh, ingredients are local spring water, organic barley and wheat malts, organic hops and brewer's yeast. The malts they use are Pilsner, wheat, Caraform, acidulated. Uh, I don't know what acidulated is, but they say it's all organic. For hops, they use Pearl, Herzbrucker. And for yeast, they use German ale and, and just, uh, just, just a German ale yeast. So pretty, pretty easy. And, uh, their notes, they say it pours a brilliantly clear straw gold. Yep. That's what I'm getting. With a rocky white foam, graham cracker malt character mingles with notes of freshly cut hay and a subtle touch of apple. Sweet grainy malt is followed by ballads, hot bitterness, and the finish is clean and dry. Well, I'm going to continue sipping and see if I can get my uh, my notes in my in my head, and you can talk about that delicious rum you got in front of you. Uh, it's it's really good. It starts off like almost a little bit spicy, I find. I don't even know if that's the right word for it. It's got kind of a like... A heat. Yeah, it's got a little bit of heat to it, um, which, of course, is because it's a little stronger than most uh, most spirits are. And then it's got this really rich, like, molasses, brown sugar sweetness, and then a slightly smoky finish from the, from the aging, of course. And I find it goes really well with the cigar. Uh, the, it really highlights the sweetness and the spice in the cigar. Yeah, I'm having, I'm having a different pairing experience, uh, although still very good. The uh, ale is like super satisfying. Um, this is exactly what I want on a hot day like this. The uh, tasting notes are pretty on point, although I'm not getting a lot of the apple. Uh, I described it as sort of a pilsner with a wheat back, but like a wheat ale backbone. So I get that nice crispness from like a pilsner, but it's got a lot more oomph, a lot more body to it than what a lot of pilsners have for my taste. So it's good in the in the Finish is really nice and crisp and clean, which is good because I think with a cigar like this that is pretty subtle, pretty nuanced, you could easily overrun this cigar. I think, uh, you know, I'm not really, I'm not really up on pairing a candela with uh, something super heavy. Um, like I've got an amber ale at the to finish off the night. I think even that might be a little bit too much. So I'm kind of excited to see the transition, but uh, this first pairing is uh, kind of perfect. Um, I think, you know, if you can get your hands on these, this would go really well with a lot of light, like even an, even a nice tea or lemon iced tea, mm-hmm. um, would go really, really well with this because it's, you know, subtle, it's lighter, uh, not so heavy. So any, any kind of ale, I think a Pilsner would be excellent. Uh, I know more than a few people who like their pills and I think this would go really well, but for me, it's really accenting the chocolate notes that I'm getting off the retro hail again, super clean finish. So, um, you know, I kind of want to rage on it. I kind of just want to puff and puff and puff mm-hmm. and puff. Um, but it's very satisfying, good smoke production. I'm uh, I'm enjoying the smoke. Yeah, you mentioned it's kind of uh, a little more medium bodied, which is really interesting because it started off very, very full. It started off super spicy, super spicy, super rich. And I'm at the halfway point and it's kind of, it's really calming down a lot, mm-hmm. uh, which I, I find is a really pleasant transition because you're so used to cigars just kind of starting off with a blast of like pepper typically uh, or sweetness, depending on what cigar it is. And then they settle down in the first third and then ramp up from there. Uh, there aren't a lot of cigars that get more refined and elegant as they go, which I'm finding to be true for this one. Yeah. And I'm finding, um, now that I'm uh, probably just wrapping up the first third here, uh, that candela, you know, that grassy candela part is kind of coming through a little bit more now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I don't know if that's just because of the evolution of the cigar or if that's being brought out by the <laughs> ale, but it's nice. It's not, again, you know, for me, uh, I find super, super fresh cut grass to be a little 
over the top for my palate. I'm not really big on grass. Um, so for me, they've, you know, James has balanced the sweetness in the cigar to offset that grass. It's not really taking over my palate. So um, initially I was getting that really clean finish and now I'm getting a little bit of um, a grassy note, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't linger. It kind of sits around for about two, three seconds and then it's, it's gone. Yeah. That kind of grassy bitterness is really balanced out in, in every cigar that I've had from Black Lake, Black Works uh, that uses Kendall. They really balance it really well with, with a little bit of strength, a little bit of spice, and a little bit of sweetness. Uh, and, and it doesn't taste like a typical Candela, which is, yeah. I mean, that's why Candelas were never popular is because it's such a different flavor. And this, you get a little bit of that, but it's not overpowering like so. She good. Mm-hmm. I would, I would, yeah, I would definitely rage on these. So if we uh, turn to Facebook and cigarfederation.com, how are we doing for questions, feedback, <clears throat> comments, moticons, et cetera, uh, et cetera. Fast Jimmy says that he thinks switching to Facebook is a good idea because it's kind of, it's a great vehicle for live shows, uh, yeah. which I completely agree with. Yeah. Uh, they're live. People can comment on it in real time, and we can see the comments in real time. We, I get notified every time somebody comments on it, um, which isn't the case for uh, YouTube. YouTube, I have to go check every time I want to see if we got new comments. Yeah, I think we tend to get a lot more comments and interactivity and shares and whatnot on uh, Facebook than we do on YouTube, which isn't to say that, like you said, we're going <clears> to <throat> plan to upload the video after we're done the show. So, you know, it'll be like, uh, for those of you who don't watch live television, It'd be like catching it after it airs. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's just how we roll. So I'm going to hop into my second pairing of the night because uh, it's one of my favorites. And I had to look back because I thought I had featured on the show before. Curiously, I have not. Uh, Rob used to tease me about this because he would he would hear Innocent Gun. Of course, it is not Innocent Gun. It is Innis and Gun from Scotland. And uh, they've got kind of an interesting history. Started really as an accident. Um, in 2003, a whiskey distillery just wanted to season some oak casks with Innocent Gun beer. So, uh, you know, kind of a fun experiment. And what ended up happening is they found that the beer that came out of that was fantastic. It had that nice whiskey finish. Um, and so they, you know, went forward with it. And it's kind of a staple for me. Um, it's, a nice, it's a nice ale that's got just a, a really malty whiskey finish to it. Of course, Innocent Gun is located in Edinburgh, Scotland. And hold that up in my fancy Innocent Gun glass. You know, if you buy enough Innocent Gun, eventually they send you a glass. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, it's got that nice amber color to it. Um, you know, it and it's, I mean, it's definitely uh, got a much more malty character to it than the uh, first beer. This is, you know, this is well into the, um, almost like an English bitter. But I know uh, the whiskey is there. I just can't not pick it up on the nose. But I know the whiskey is there. It's got a it's got a really strong whiskey influence. Uh, how is uh, I kind of kind of rushed it along. How how was that first pairing for you? Oh, it was great. Uh, like like I said, the the sweetness and the smoke from the the uh, rum really complements the sweetness and the spice from the cigar. Nice. So what do you got up for number two? Uh, so number two, I have uh, one of my kind of standby classics, Hard Bag Ten. Woo. I mean, any anybody who loves Pete needs to have a, a bottle of this on hand. Uh, it's kind of the class. I guess it's this and Lafroy. I feel like are the classic heavily peated whiskeys. This is a little peatier than than Lafroy Ten, um, but Hard Bag Ten and Lafroy Ten are really kind of the classics. And the thing that always surprises me about Ardbeg is how light it is. I mean, I feel like the camera actually makes it look a little more golden, mm -hmm. but it's like just, it looks almost like a white wine. Yeah. It's so light. Like a um, Pinot. Yeah, like a Pinot. And then you, uh, you nose it and it's just all peat, just mm -hmm. campfire and iodine and all of the things I love about Isla Scotch. Man, I'm just digging this cigar so much. much. So talking about this Innis and Gun original. Ooh, got a lot of noise from you there, Trippy. Oh, sorry. Apologize to a live audience here. Uh, it is a bit of a step up. This is not what I would call necessarily sessionable. I mean, you could have two of these in a session, but you might be well on your way. 
as they say. 6.6% ABV. They use a lot of malts. They use an Innis and Gun Ale Malt, a Crystal Malt, a Raw Wheat. For hops, they just use one hop. It's the Super Styrian. And then uh, it's all about the magic finishing. So it spends 77 days. This one spends 77 days in bourbon casks. And then they use uh, bourbon-infused heartwood in an ochorator. We've got this patented ochorator, which is to infuse the beer with uh, that oaky cask character. And they say the taste is smooth with toffee notes and light hop fruitiness. And they do have uh, pairings. Their website's actually quite modern, which is impressive. Um, curries, grilled seafood, good quality burgers, and juicy steaks. All things relevant to my interests. We're going to have to add cigars to that list because so far, so good. Have you had a chance to take a couple sippies of that uh, Ardbeg? Oh, yeah. And it, it plays very differently with the cigar. Uh, it really cuts the sweetness but it highlights the spice and that kind of grassy bitter note and creaminess that you get from the wrappers. Uh, and the, the scotch starts off a little bit floral at first, and then you've got some, I don't know, like a honey sweetness almost. Like a, it reminds me of raw honey, like mm. the, uh, the, the honey that's all crystally and, and a little bit of extra sweet, but then it's got so much honey flavor. Yeah. And then, of course, as soon as you swallow it, it's just smoke. Just pure peat smoke, iodine. Uh, and I get kind of a, a minerally rocky quality from it. It's, it's very good. I like it. And so I think it my, goes well with the cigar. Ahead. Sorry. No, I, I kind of jumped in there. Um, so this Innocent Gun original... Um, Exactly as described and exactly as I recall, it's got uh, really nice toffee, toffee sweetness, which, uh, you know, when we say toffee sweetness, I think it, it harkens to maybe an overwhelming, super sickly sweet toffee. But in this case, it's kind of an accent note. It's just, it's just a really nice accent note to the, uh, to the ale. And it's got a really great creamy mouthfeel to it. That's, um, very satisfying. So I find I don't need to take you know, with, with maybe a Pilsner or um, a lager, you tend to take sip after sip because maybe you're not getting a satisfying mouth experience. With this ale, you take a sip, uh, very satisfying, so I can set it down and I don't need to go right back. But what's interesting with a cigar is because I do get that toffee-like sweetness, um, it's it's really highlighting the candela portion of the cigar. So it's kind of overrunning the um, sweetness that's kind of present here in the cigar and instead accenting the candela, which is interesting because I, I don't think I was really getting that much of the Kendall originally, and I think now I'm getting a lot more of it. So um, I'm going to take some retro hills here. See what I got. And Ben Holt wants to know if, he can, if I can see his comment, and I can. You cannot? I, just want to confirm, I can. I just want Excellent. to confirm that. Thanks for your comment, Ben. So I'm still getting that like kind of cocoa, um, maybe a little bit of oaky notes off the um, retro hell. And again, I think <clears throat> this ale is really bringing that out. Um, and interestingly enough, I think I'm going to be in bad territory with my amber ale to finish because I think that amber ale might be a little too hoppy. I think this is a cigar. Uh, IPAs, sours uh, would probably mm -hmm. be a little too much, maybe a little too similar to the Candela type experience. And I'm I'm kind of thinking that ales, uh, actually Irish whiskey, like a really light Irish whiskey might be really interesting with this. Um, you know, that really delicate floral note um, might be really interesting with this. Yeah, I could, I could absolutely see that. So tasty. So I'm going to take a moment here and remind our audience, you are tuned in to Sharing Our Pairings, episode 114. We are doing the Neon Tiger from Blackwork Studio. If you haven't smoked Blackwork Studio, what are you doing with your life? Go out and get some Blackwork Studio because they good. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Trippy Trent. Please stay tuned for a word from one of our sponsors. This show is sponsored by Cigar Oasis. Don't spend all your time worrying about your cigar wrappers cracking, splitting, or falling apart from humidity fluctuation issues. Set it and forget it by choosing Cigar Oasis, a professional solution which provides equal distribution of humidity with precise electronic controls. Monitor your cigars through the internet using the smart humidor Wi-Fi attachment. Why don't you spend all your time enjoying your cigars and relaxing and let Cigar Oasis protect your cigars? Cigar Oasis has solutions for any humidor. Make sure you set it and forget it today. 
And of course, uh, I said it and forget it when I was in IPCPR and uh, got a text from my fiance about my uh, humidity alarm going off, which was uh, kind of good to have a humidity alarm. And essentially was telling me that, uh, A, the temperature was way too hot in the condo when uh, when we were in Vegas. <laughs> and uh, initially I thought it was an under-humidification alarm. Uh, turns out I had the wrong, and it, and it didn't really make a lot of sense to me because the house was at like, you know, 90, 90 degrees or something insane. So I'm like, well, the math of that doesn't work out. It should, like, it, there's no way it should be under humidified. Like, even if the cabinet was open, it should be at like 55 or 60. And it turns out it was the over humidification alarm going off and warning that, you know, it was over humidified. So we just turned it down and, uh, aired it out for, uh, five, 10 minutes and, uh, let it do its thing. And, all is good. Now, of course, if I had the Wi-Fi attachment, I could have been able to handle that remotely. But, uh, you know, I'm not a baller like that. I, you know, I'm kind of kind of analog, I guess, because uh, just taking readings and adjusting that way. But yeah, me okay. too. I, I, I want to get the uh, the Wi-Fi attachment at some point. I just haven't I haven't committed to it yet. It's cool, man, because, it, you, know, you know, it comes with an app. You can remotely monitor. You can make changes. It's kind of cool. I dig it. Yeah, my my original plan was actually to uh, do that with a Raspberry Pi, mm. um, but when when I moved, I misplaced some of my hardware. Oops! So I haven't gotten that all set up again for about a year. But yeah. So so talking about this Neon Tiger, I'm I'm kind of hitting the halfway point here. I think. Um, again, it's burning really nicely. Uh, I'm getting a lot more, and again, I don't know if this is because of the ales bringing this out of the cigar. Having not smoked this cigar, it's tough for me to tell whether it's, uh, inherent within the cigar or being pulled out from this ale, but I'm getting a lot more of that wood influence here at the halfway point. Um, like almost, um, it's, it, it's really, it's a cedary flavor. So a little bit of a drying mouthfeel, a little bit of that Spanish cedar type spice to it. Um, and it lingers a little bit. So I'm getting a lot of that cedar post draw. It's pleasant, but what it, what it's doing is it's serving to kind of offset that candela experience. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I'm not surprised that this cigar is undergoing some evolutions. Cause that's, I mean, that's kind of how they blend. They, they don't blend boring cigars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think I've had anything from black label that I would call boring. <laughs> no. I don't. I don't even think they can blend. Uh, uh, you know, a good cigar. I think they're. To me, they've always been very good to great to excellent. Um, mm -hmm. Which is why I keep going back. I mean, my humidor is like getting stuffed full of black works. I gotta, gotta smoke more. Smoke more and talk less. I think. Yeah, that sounds like a good point. Mm -hmm. So how's that? Um, that Ardbeg pairing holding up for you? Fantastic. The. I think it's a little overpowering for the cigar. But the flavors do go to go together really well. I feel like an Ardbeg. Uh, what's the next one up? Is it a fourteen or an eighteen? Um, that's a good question. I, you know, I'm. I'm I know they have older expressions, but they do. I can't recall any of them right now. Yeah, and I'm so out of touch with their older expressions because I'm always uh, getting getting sucked in with all their um, their their yearly releases, like the yeah. Udell. And the uh, Supernova and the Ardbog and all that stuff. Um, I, 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 you know, there are there are a few bucks more than like the ten or anything else. Yeah, but um, I, but I, I do feel like an older expression would work re work a little better with the cigar mm. because you would still get that kind of, uh, I don't know, that sort of smoothness that you get from an Ardbeg with a hit of smoke, mm. uh, but the smoke would be a little bit less because. Um, the weird thing about Ardbeg is that it's it tastes like a full bodied whiskey, but it's really kind of a a light to medium bodied whiskey in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That just has so much smoke, it makes it taste full bodied. So I feel like an older expression would kind of counteract that a little bit, and it would end up being just as smooth and elegant, but a little less peaty, which would uh, interfere with the cigar a little less. Mm -hmm. There's of course the, the um, interesting if you want a lot of peat is you have to get you have to get a younger whiskey. Because the peat really starts to fall off. Um, I've had 18-year-old really heavily peated whiskeys, and, and older, certainly. And uh, that peat really falls to the background, which, as you say, might be um, might be a better style. I, c I could really see that sort of briny uh, coastal quality going really mm -hmm. well with this. Um, yeah. Because I find that supercharges my palate a little bit. Yeah, I feel like I, I would have maybe been better served by an Oban. 
Mm. Uh, but I've, I didn't want to pick that because I've featured it so many times. Uh, but it, <laughs> it's got that, that briny quality without having quite as much smoke. Um, so I feel like that would go really well with this cigar. Well, well, as much as I'm enjoying this Innis and Gun original, and it is one of my go-tos, I'm going to move on to my third and final beer of the night, and I don't know how it's going to pair. It's a bit of a bit of a wild card for me. And this is from Tree Brewing Company, which uh, I featured them three or four times in the show over the years. And uh, this one I just picked up because I um, got a little bit of feedback there from a trippy, sorry. Oops, um, sorry. Uh... This one I mostly pick because the name. It's the uh, Thirsty Beaver. And, I mean, how could you not? I saw that on the shelf. And uh, there's so many so many funny things that could be said. Uh, of course, beaver being one of the national a- animals of uh, Canada. And, by the way, for those who have never encountered a beaver before, uh, they are not small or meek animals. Uh, they will mess you up. They're very large, very powerful animals. Um, so the fact that he's got the uh, picture on there with a smiling beaver – um, don't, don't approach a beaver. They will, they will mess you up, um, big time. They will fight yeah, you. They will fight you. And they have big teeth and, uh, they've been known to kill people with their teeth. So this is from Tree Brewing Company. As I mentioned, uh, I think it's like the fourth or fifth time I featured them on the show. Uh, they're located in BC. BC has, uh, kind of like the Pacific Northwest. They've, they've been featuring, uh, craft and, uh, mm-hmm. small breweries for a very long time. They, they really started craft beer revolution in canada a long long time ago so tree brewing actually goes back to 1996 opened up in Kelowna. by the way for those who have not been to Kelowna, great place to summer hot as heck uh but lots and lots and lots of lakes great place to uh camp out and have a good time uh they are of course uh, run by the brewmaster dave gokert and uh the president todd melnick and the Thirsty Beaver is uh, back into the sessionable category, uh, 5% ABV, 20 IBUs. I'll hold that up. And definitely an amber ale, no question about it. You can see it's got that nice brown amber color. They use uh, pearl hops, cascade hops. And then for malts, they use pale, dark munich, and crystal. And they see the notes are a distinct malt character with caramel and nut undertones. Uh, and then food pairing. Uh, and I love this, by the way, The brewers are starting to get into a lot more um, pairing notes and a lot more detail on the beer for, for beer geeks out there. They say for food pairing, uh, chicken, seafood, burgers, and cheddar cheese. This is a pretty wide gamut. Hopefully it uh, goes well with a uh, Candela cigar. I'm going to get into that in just a moment and let uh, you talk about your third and final pairing of the night. Uh, so my final pairing is a beer from Off Color Brewing called Dino S'mores. I'll talk about Off Color a little first. Um, it was started by a guy named John and a guy named Dave. They actually met in brewing school in 2008 they both ended up interning at metropolitan brewing in chicago and then after their internship they took all of the knowledge uh all of the beer knowledge and all of the business practices of uh metropolitan brewing and started off color and also in chicago and even on their website they say they tell the story and then they say but also buy that guy's beer from Metropolitan because it's really good and they taught us how to do what we do. That's cool. Uh, yeah, which you kind of appreciate because, uh, you know, they're not making any money from that. They're, they're, they just want to, you know, pass the, uh, pass the honor up to the people who t- showed them how to do what they do. Absolutely. Rising tide raises all boats. Exactly. Um, and that, that comment actually reminds me a lot of the cigar industry because, like you said, the rising tide raises all boats, and that's a very common theme among cigar uh, manufacturers and retailers. They all want everybody to succeed. Absolutely. Um, so, and, and another interesting thing, I'm not going to go over the equipment that they have in their brew house because they list every single piece of equipment that they have. Wow. They, they tell you how big it is, they tell you what brand it is, and they tell you what model it is. So they're like the Steve Saka of uh, brewing? Yes, um, and then, of course, they also tell you everything that's in this Dino S'mores Marshmallow Imperial Stout. Uh, so the malts, it's got a ton of malts. Deanna, wheat, Cara number two, extra special, flaked oats, dark chocolate, black malts, and roasted barley. Wow. Uh, and then it's got, oh, I forgot to put it in my notes, but they've got a single hop in here, which is nugget. Uh, and then their secret ingredients which are, you know, the, uh, the additions that kind of make this beer what it is, are marshmallow fluff, vanilla beans, molasses, graham, cra- graham, cra- 
graham cracker flour, and cocoa nibs. So it's got all of the ingredients of s'mores in there. It sounds and like it, a monster stout. Yeah, I think I might have gone the wrong direction with this one. It's it's 40 IBUs and 10 and a half ABV. Woo! And it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, that nice, classic, viscous, black stout. Um, so I'm going to take a couple sips while you talk about your beer. So I think I, think I might have um, paired out of order here. The, I was expecting this amber ale to be uh, really heavy on the on the body, and I actually think that the Innocent Gun Ale has uh, more body, more forward body, and a lot more toffee sweetness than this last amber. Uh, their notes are really bang on. Um, it's got a nice uh, subdued malty quality to it. It's not a like a charred malt or an espresso malt. It's just got a nice subdued sweet malt that's not sickly sweet, and then. The nuttiness, the, the the nutty undertones kind of reminds me of peanuts. Like it's it's really light. Um, it lingers nicely. And then it's got a nice interplay with the cigar, probably more so than the Innocent Gun, because I think this Amber Ale is, uh, again, along the same body level as this cigar. So it's not overpowering the cigar in any way. And that was really my big concern is that this Amber Ale was just going to run it right over. So um, fortunately, it's only 20 IBUs. I think... If I'd gone with anything heavier in the IBUs, that probably would have been too much. But it's good. It's um, you know, very sessionable. Um, I can tell you that I made the wrong decision here. This is a oh, I no. mean, this this beer is incredible. It's way too strong for the cigar. There's oh, just no. so much sweetness, so much hoppiness, and like, you know, that that coating of the palate from the stout that it just overruns the cigar almost completely. Oh, I can barely taste the cigar after after taking a sip of that, which I'm I'm kind of happy with because that's 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 the first like completely wrong pairing that I've had I think. Got to shake things up now and again and um, push the envelope. You can't you can't always go safe with your pairings. That's you know we're not about uh, just doing coffee and rum all the time. We want to shake things up and do some pairings that don't work. Mm-hmm. Part, of the, part of the fun, you know, sometimes we try stuff that we don't think is going to work and it does work, and sometimes we try stuff. It doesn't work, and that's just how it goes here in sharing our parents. Yeah, like that um, cherry, that cherry barrel aged ale that I had mm. last last week, I think, or the week before. Um, that would have gone really well with this, because that was kind of a medium, more medium body. Mm. This beer is just completely full bodied to the wall. So I'm finding, um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm getting a little bit of hoppiness now. And interestingly enough, I think I'm I'm getting some of the hoppiness because of the cigar. So I think what's happening is the candela, that uh, grassy note from the candela is drawing some of that hoppiness out of the beer. So it's kind of an interesting interplay. It's good. Um, I think the candela is really starting to show itself here as I move to the end of the middle third here. Um, but, you know, again... This is this is a really interesting cigar and something that uh, I could definitely see myself raging on, if only because it's it'd be a great cigar to whip out at a hearth. Um, you know, there's nothing else that quite looks like this, and uh, it's interesting. It's a good talking point, and mm-hmm. you know, and it tastes good. So, kind of checks all the boxes for me. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. It w- it would be a good hearth cigar for that reason. Like, you would light it up, and everybody would go, "Whoa, what are you smoking? What are you smoking?" So, I'm going to remind our audience here. That you are, in fact, tuning into Sharing Our Pairings, episode 114, Neon Tiger. I'm your host, John, the Cigar Surgeon, joined, as always, by Trippy Trent, my co-host. We are broadcast live around the world. We are picked up on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Uh, we are broadcast on YouTube.com, although we're talking about uh, switching off the live broadcast of YouTube and just going to a record after the show is done, just to simplify our workflow here. Just do a live broadcast to our Facebook listeners. And, of course, thanks to all our podcast listeners out there. You guys were listening in droves during the IPCPR. We set uh, a seven-day record for podcast listens uh, consecutively. Every day was more listenership than the last, so thanks so much for that support. Thanks to everyone who is still listening and is subscribed to our channel. We appreciate the love. Hope you are enjoying this episode. Please stay tuned for a word from one of our sponsors. Show brought to you by Drew Estate. Until June 30th, if you're a Drew Diplomat member, you attend a rewards program event and make a promotional purchase, you will receive a Liga Privada Velvet Rat. You'll also be entered to win a Drew Diplomat Pewter Ashtray, Mega Standing Ashtray, or the Swag Closet Humanor, dubbed the Divorcinator. All these products were built and designed by Drew Estate Subculture Studios. 
If you're not a member, download the Drew Diplomat app from the Apple Store or Google Play Store today. All right, and we're, of course, uh, pairing the Neon Tiger from Blackwork Studio, which is a, uh, a factory exclusive. And it's interesting, Trippy, because there's been a lot of talk about uh, different factories doing factory exclusives. Uh, there's a couple factories out there that have done event-only cigars where they make mm-hmm. a specific size or specific blend for events. And what happens sometimes is those cigars get so popular, there's such a demand uh, that they end up making a regular release. Now, that might not be possible with the uh, new environment that we live under. Hopefully that'll change in the near future. But uh, that might not be something that's possible going forward. But for me, it's kind of fun to try something that's not being actively marketed uh, that does have a little bit of exclusivity to it. Um, you know, there's a great story there. Uh, obviously, you get a great cigar. Hopefully, in this case, we do. But I do, I do see, um, I do see quite a number of manufacturers doing that, and it's it's fun. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of nice because it's uh, you know, there's always going to be those cigars that are unicorns to you. Yeah, and it's kind of nice that they have unicorns that are. Uh, that are specific to the factory. You can only get them if you go to the factory and get one. Uh, which is, I mean, it's just a cool concept to me. I could definitely, I could definitely see um, on one of my many trips to Nicaragua, which hopefully I'll be going down to Nicaragua in the near future. But I could definitely see on a trip to Nicaragua getting uh, blown up by Facebook Messenger and text on people mm-hmm. wanting me to bring back. And uh, I might share one or two at a herf. But uh, I'm not going to be your um, I'm not going to be your uh, mule. You're not going to be uh, you know? mule, mule and uh, neon tigers all over North America. No, no. If you want a neon tiger, you got to get on a plane. You got to go down to Esteli. You got to check out uh, some delicious skirt steak, and you got to go down to the factory and talk to James and Angela and have a delicious smoke. And um, you know we've been down there. Gosh, I want to say, got to be three, four times at least. I've been down three or four times. You've been down a couple. I've times. been down four. Four times, yeah. So there you go. So we've both been down four times, and uh, they're always very welcoming. I mean, you know, you can kind of show up uh, on a moment's notice, and uh, they're always very welcoming. Got a stick for you. Uh, you can do a factory tour. It's a nice, smallish factory, uh, and of course, uh, one of the highlights of the trip is their uh, delicious aging room, which is um, kind of front and center. Which is interesting because not a lot of factories you walk in the door and they have the the es- escaparada right there. Most of yeah, them are kind of tucked. It's Hidden in the back. Kind of uh, secret downstairs facility. Yeah, exactly. Like it's a room they don't they don't really want to show you, but they'll show you anyway. Um, but at Black at at a uh, Ovea Negra, it's right there. They've got a big glass window, so you can see it as soon as you walk in. It's it's cool. Fun. It's a fun factory. It's one of the many fun factories you can visit in Esteli. And if you have not been to Esteli, uh, it's kind of one of those things. If you're a cigar smoker, you got to add it to your bucket list. You got to make it a priority. Yeah. Um, I don't want to tell you to buy a couple less boxes of cigars, but if you buy a couple less boxes of cigars and save your ducats and fly down to Esteli, you will not have a bad experience. I guarantee it. I don't think guarantee. you could have a bad time in Esteli. Um, no, people are too welcoming. Yeah. So uh, before we go uh, wrap up here, go back over our pairings and kind of rate them, uh, how are we doing for uh, Facebook comments, questions, likes, and emoticons? Um, I mean, of course, we've got a bunch of emoticons and likes. Uh, Bob, Bob Dog has an interesting idea for a pairing show. Nice. Um, he's suggesting a wheel of cigars and a wheel of beers. Um, I don't know if a wheel will work, but maybe like a, a Google spreadsheet with a randomizer. Uh, and we just make a list of beers and a list of cigars, and then we just let let Google do all the work and just see how it turns out. Which, I mean, that kind of sounds like fun. I'm down. I've got enough beers and certainly enough cigars to do that. Mm-hmm. I think um, we could probably do that in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're probably going to have to do a pre-record for uh, next Wednesday. So uh, stay tuned to that. Uh, we'll have that uploaded on time on schedule for Wednesday at a regular scheduled time. Uh, but unfortunately, life intervenes, and uh, we both have some conflicting schedules, so we're going to yep. have to do a pre- <clears throat> and I the, think we are. And the following week, we'll be on assignment. That's right. So uh, we'll be on assignment on location in parts unknown, uh, but we will come back and have a great, probably uh, 
might even do a Tuesday wrap up show, uh, sort of talking about our trip experience and, uh, yeah. wrapping that up for everybody. Lots of pictures to show off on that, but, um, going back over the pairings of the night. So I started the night with the lug tread lagered ale from Bose brewery. Uh, that was a fantastic pairing. I think that to me is kind of ideal for this type of cigar, uh, a lager or a Pilsner, um, really kind of fits the profile. It's, it's light. Uh, it doesn't take away from the cigar. It's fresh. It's refreshing. It's got a quick finish. Uh, I don't think it really rocked my socks or blew my skirt up. So, uh, although it was very, very enjoyable, I would rate that as sort of an average experience, maybe an 87, 88, but, uh, but an enjoyable experience. How about you, Trippy? Um, for me, my first pairing, the, uh, selection to maestros, which I've almost finished here. That is the pairing of the night for me. The wow. sweetness of the rum, the smokiness just goes so well with the cigar um, and and doesn't overpower it. It only enables the cigar more. And and then, of course, the cigar doesn't overpower the, the rum at all either. Nice. So talking about the second pairing of the night, I went with the Innis & Gun Original, which is uh, aged in bourbon casks and then in their patented Okerator. Um, I was expecting that to be a bit of a lighter experience than my Amber Ale, so I kind of paired these out of order, but, you know, that happens. We are pairing experts, um, but, hey, we're not, um, we're, not, we're not pairing surgeons? I don't, we're not perfect? No. We're not perfect. So um, it was good. It was a, it was a fun experience. Uh, I think the uh, ale was maybe a little bit too forward on flavor. Um, didn't really extract from the cigar what I was hoping for. Um, so again, I think a, a kind of an average pairing experience. It didn't, didn't at all, you know, didn't, it wasn't anything I'm going to be seeking out in the future. Um, for me, that was kind of a pretty medium average experience, probably an 84, 85. What about your second pairing? Of the uh, so I, I forgot to give a number to my first pairing. I'd give that one a 94. It, it just goes so wow. well with the cigar. And then the art bag. The body of the whiskey is perfect. The smokiness, I think, interferes with the cigar too much. But it's still a, a very good pairing. I would give that one an 88. Okay. It's pretty decent. And then, uh, of course, I finished the night up with the Tree Brewing Thirsty Beaver Amber Ale, mostly because it's just a funny name and very Canadian. Uh, and again, I think that probably should have been my second pairing of the night. I think that would have fit neatly in the, uh, in the flavor profile strength. Um, that was pretty good. Uh, I think the nuttiness was interesting and it kind of makes me wonder if a nut brown ale, um, might be a good way to go with this cigar. I think it would, uh, probably still not overpower the cigar. It'd be, it'd be tasty. Um, but again, uh, not, ex not exciting necessarily. It's not something I'd necessarily seek out. I think you probably had the right idea with the rum. I think this cigar with a rum or an Irish whiskey, uh, would probably be right in the great, great wheelhouse of uh, pairing. So for me, uh, probably rated amongst the same level as that first lug tread laggard ale. So I'd probably rated an 88, 89. Very fun experience, uh, but not uh, not breaking into the excellent category for me. And for me, the off-color Dino S'mores, while it's an, a fantastic beer that goes really well with like a, a strong broadleaf cigar, it's just, it's got too much of everything. It's got too much sweetness, too much chocolate, too much... Uh, hops and it just runs over the cigar completely uh, so that one i would give an 82 it's just it's not the right pairing for the cigar i could see that going really well with um a lot of the other uh black label trading company stuff black work stuff um like the morphine or the deliverance or uh bishop's blend or any any of the other sort of more full-bodied cigars yeah I could see that going really well i i could see a bishop's blend or a uh a killer bee I, I think would go really well with this cigar, like the Pennsylvania Broadleaf, the spice, the sweetness would stand up to this beer with, with the Candela wrapper um, and the, what I would call slightly more medium bodied fillers. It's just, it's too overpowering for the cigar. Mm. Definitely. So uh, I think for tomorrow night, we normally have a cigar chat, uh, but I think we are, um, Skipping cigar chat tomorrow is that right? Yeah, uh, we had a, we had some scheduling conflicts for tomorrow, so we won't have a show. I unfortunately will be on location uh, in another city doing my uh, regular scheduled duties of what I am paid for. 
Uh, I'm doing a cigar event at one of our stores, so I'll be on location there uh, pretty much all day and all night, driving back late at night. So unfortunately, I won't be able to make a cigar chat. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll be doing a pretty exciting Share our pairings pre-record for next Wednesday, which is uh, going to feature another new cigar from the IPCPR. We'll have that up on our event calendar uh, probably in the next couple of days, so watch for that. And uh, it will air at a regular scheduled time of 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Mountain next Wednesday. And then I think, uh, do, we have a, do we have a cigar chat scheduled for next Thursday yet? No. Ne- so next Thursday, I, uh, I mean, so I, my wife is going to be out of town, so I'm going to be alone with the kids. Uh, I gotcha. um, so I, I can't go into, out into my, my uh, recording studio for a couple hours. Copy that. And, and uh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So, uh, yeah, you'll have to stay tuned to our event calendar at CigarFederation.com. Keep, keep on tabs of that. And, of course, we'll have the events posted at our Facebook page, Cigar Federation. Pretty straightforward. Do we have any, uh, any finishing comments or questions from our audience before we wrap up uh, tonight's show? Bob Dog wants to give us major props for our IPCPR coverage. Um, I mean, like we talked about last week, I, I feel like it turned out really good. We, we got a ton of interviews. We were so busy. Um, yeah. And and I feel like we we did a good job. Yeah, I'm proud I of think it. so too. Pat ourselves, pat ourselves on the yeah. back. I think we did a pretty good job. And uh, props to uh, Black's Work Studio, James Brown at uh, at uh, Black Label Trading Company. This is um this is a tasty cigar. This is one I will definitely be seeking out yeah. as I visit the Black Work Studio, the Fabrico Oveja Negra in Esteli in the future, which hopefully will not be too long in the future because I do love going down to Esteli. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm hoping I can go down in the in the nearest future. So stay tuned to our event calendar, scarfederation.com. In the meantime, we do always say on sharing our pairings, we do want you to drink better, but we want you to drink less.